Archers. Exploit blockchain. Всем привет. Uh, hello everyone. Um, now my name is Max. I'm CEO of Hodl Hodl peer-to-peer non-custodial exchange. Okay, that's it. So um, I'm not going to speak about Hodl Hodl in general because I do think that you shouldn't promote your own services on uh, non-marketing technical events. So instead of speaking about hodl hodl, we will speak about fictional exchange called Sodl Sodl. And, um, but it's based on true story. So I wanted to start my presentation with uh, one uh, quote that I actually like. Uh, I definitely hope centralized exchanges go burn in hell as much as possible. Um, you might think that this uh, quote was uh, pronounced by uh, some kind of Bitcoin maximalist or crazy anarchist, but actually it was pronounced by, yeah, it was pronounced by this guy. Um, there he is, um, Vitalik Buterin. Um, recently, like a uh, half year ago, during the interview on TechCrunch in Zug, he mentioned that he don't like the centralized exchange approach and he hoped that everyone in centralized exchange business will fail. Yeah, so my presentation name is how to build a Bitcoin exchange and not to burn hell. And um, I wanted to tell you the story of building the peer-to-peer -peer exchange and how we came about and what kind of challenges was on our way. So everything started in 2015 with two guys working in a Bitcoin wallet company. They were paid in BTC. And uh, at that time, they didn't have an opportunity to sell their BTC or salary on the centralized exchanges because of some reasons. So they used peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. And um, so in peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, the difference is that you can trade directly with your peers. So basically, there's a seller, there's a buyer, and there's no centralized trading engine. So the issue with peer-to-peer -peer exchanges at that point that they were not secure or they were, they were claiming that they're secure. They were centrally storing the coins. Uh, you, will, you were still able to trade uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer manner, but the coins were stored in centralized storage, which is unsafe. And the another problem was that their user interface and user experience literally sucked. So you basically were able to lost your, your funds because you don't understand what this button means and th what that button means. So, and so the idea of Sodl Sodl was born with intention to fix those problems and create a better peer-to-peer -peer exchange. So two guys left the company, they were working and started their own exchange. Literally, there were only two of them. They were building the exchange for two years uh, one was writing the code, the another one was doing the testing, UI, UX, and business development. And um, they actually were able to afford to hire first employee in two years after they started the project. Mostly because the rise of the price of Bitcoin. So, from the beginning, the aim that Sodal Sodal will have a uh, few important features. Yeah, your clicker doesn't work properly. So first feature was not holding any coins and in this particular case, not holding Bitcoins. So how was it made? Actually, instead of holding any Bitcoins, they would generate a special P2SH escrow address with the multisig features for each separate contract where the seller would send his Bitcoins to the escrow and after the contract was completed, the seller would sign the release transaction with his key, while the exchange would use its uh, key to confirm. This is a basic workflow for two out of two multi-sig uh, escrow accounts. Now, the another thing was uh, much lower commission, and I have a piggy bank on the next slide, but the clicker, again, not working properly, guys. Um, yeah, so... That's it, you know? We are burning in hell at the moment, literally with these presentations. Uh, yeah, cheaper, 
again, the piggy bank. I'm a funny guy, less, more funny than uh, the guys in the suit, so I can tell some jokes instead of speaking about my presentation. So instead of charging 1%, which is usually charged by most of the peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, we would charge 0.6. Um, this one actually outraged a lot of people who were complaining that way you are way more expensive than Bitstamp, Kraken, but you cannot compare centralized exchange to peer-to-peer -peer exchange, so you basically need to compare peer-to-peer -peer exchange to any other peer-to-peer -peer exchange. Now, the another thing was, um, yeah, UE, UX. So we were thinking and rethinking the UA, UX, so it will be much more easier to use. The important thing was also that these guys actually introduced the testnet version of their Bitcoin exchange, and th this one doesn't exist in the market at the moment. So literally, before trading with real Bitcoins, you can go to testnet version of the same exchange, you can download testnet uh, Bitcoins from any faucet out there in the internet, they're for free, you can trade with testnet coins, and then at some point you will be able to move forward with the real Bitcoin trading, so you can learn easily. Now another important feature is no KYC AML, I like that point. Um, you need to applause for that because uh, most of the exchanges actually use KYC AML. Um, Something that proved to be especially valuable to users since the other peer-to-peer -peer exchange actually introduced KYC AML to some extent this year. Um, they also had an education section with video screencasts and a lot of stuff. And, and they didn't do any ICO. Because you cannot do ICO for peer-to-peer -peer exchange, people will, will literally won't understand you. So. But unfortunately, by the year 2017, we were still in pre-launch. So two guys were able to launch a testnet version, and we find out a lot of bugs. We did a three, three lines of penetration testing. We find the vulnerabilities, and although we didn't hold any coins, still there was some major issues with, with the exchange. So another, yeah. Another problem was with the team. So as a security measures, the founders of Exchange, uh, they, they didn't believe in the fact that you need to sit in one place. So all the team was working remotely, starting from US and ending with, with Asia. Uh, because of that, most some of the peoples were actually unhappy with this shuttle. And uh, literally first year of the work, 50% of the workflow was fired, and then at some point we stick with the core team. Also quite important feature when you're building an exchange is a, t is a team site. You don't need usually to hire a lot of developers. You, do need, you just need to hire a proper ones. So currently Sodal Sodal runs by 10 people, and that's more than enough for peer-to-peer -peer exchange. Basically, that's more than enough for most of the businesses out there. So you don't need like 500 people doing the same job simultaneously. Now, the important feature that I want to stress out, you need to hire a lot of quality assurance engineers, actually. Uh, because if you have a lot of testers, you, this will lead you to two very good consequences. It will make your developers more diligent, so they will make less mistakes. And also, you will always have a fresh eye on your box, and a lot of people will see your code and will be able to, ha to find a lot of uh, bad things. And finally, the integration system. Actually, I usually don't say about that because it was written by our CTO. He's a bit boring guy and there's a lot of technical details, but I do understand that some of you actually listening in the headphones, so I will read it for you. So finally, I cannot stress out, en stress out enough how important it is to have a reliable continuous integration system that everyone understands. So for example, for each merge request in our development process, uh, we have a separate instance, and unit tests are being run on the separate instance. So everyone knows how to deploy the merge request, and everyone knows what steps are before one merges the process, and everyone knows who is responsible for merging. So by that, we're sure that we have smooth and reliable process. Now, to sum up all my points, 
um, except for being with a bad clicker. Um, to not burn in hell and to build a proper Bitcoin exchange, you need to follow just simple st steps. Yeah, so takeaways. Safu, stay Safu. Uh, to build a secure product uh, or to build a secure centralized or non-centralized exchange, if you are building peer-to-peer -peer exchange, better make it non-custodial, so don't store any user funds. If you are building a centralized exchange, um, well, I, I, I don't feel your pain, but uh, to be honest, you need to hire a lot of security experts and you need to do a lot of internal and external security audits. So you also need to be cheaper than your peers because people like paying less for the same amount of service. Um, you need to do very nice UE UI and great UX. So just sure that uh, there will be still people who don't understand your uh, your exchange, who is for whom it's difficult to use that. But still, you need to be with a proper UI and UX. It's very important. Um, try to educate your users because it's important. It's these products in crypto. You generally and usually they're quite difficult. People don't understand them. If you think that you are building something unique and everyone will understand, well, I have a surprise for you. Nobody would understand that, most probably. Um, yeah, don't do KYC ML, if you can, of course, to some extent. Um, and don't do ICO, because it's a legal trap. And it's also a security measure. Because at some point, you will receive subpayana from SAC, and... Um, maybe sitting somewhere on the yacht with girls, but trust me, as soon as you will reach the, 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 the land, you will have some really, really important problems. And the last slide, be cute. I'm not cute, our CTO is cute, but try to be cute with everyone, even, even with your customers who usually don't understand the shit. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for the clicker. Overall, the conference is great. Thank you. Archive. Exploit blockchain.